Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is Francesco here. Today's video, I'm checking out email applications. Um, we have the tier system uh, up in front of us. I'll explain what it is. Then we'll dive into rating email applications for 2021. So as you can imagine, uh, what we did last time in the note taking one and the to-do list app one is we rated them based on five levels. Amazing, which is you know, uh, brilliant, uh, great, good, average, sort of middle ground, the guys, and NAF, which is an English term for rubbish. So uh, in today's video, we're gonna be diving into email apps. I think email apps are like one of those things that um, are just sort of layers to your existing experience. If you use Gmail, Outlook, or Apple Mail, these all come naturally free, but some of these are paid options that just add a different experience to the top of it, just something nicer to look at as you open your emails every single day. So here we are with the rating system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into to start off with Airmail. Now Airmail is an iOS and Mac application. It's really well designed. It looks really lovely as an email application. I would say uh, for my own experience of it, it's just a good application. It, nothing great. Um, it's got a nice one-off cost to it, which is always good to have, especially when you're paying for an email application. Uh, sometimes a lot of them do recurring subscriptions. Uh, so I think this is just a, just a nice, good application. It's one of those ones, if you're not looking for something too extensive, like say Newton or Hay or Superhuman, but you're not looking for something too too sort of low key, like Gmail. Uh, it's a good sort of middle ground and you're using iOS and Mac. So next up is Edison Mail. And for my opinion of this one, I'm actually impressed with the application because it's got a really nice iOS and Android app. The Mac version is actually invite only, but they do offer a really nice experience for free, which is good inside of it. You can use things like unsubscribe and smart mailbox tidy ups. Um, and it's just a nice app for mobile. So I'm impressed with it. It gets a great from me. That's Edison Mail. Next up is Front. I shouldn't have really included this one. This is Front's old logo, but it is a just a really good, uh, well put together customer service for Teams email application. So if you're a team looking for like con communicate with a team inbox and sort of manage logs and things like that, then it's a good one for that. Um, I shouldn't really put that in because it's more of a team app. I sort of forgot when I was doing this. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a good application. So next up is Hey. Hey actually impressed me when it launched. It's an application that works on all devices. It's developed by the chaps and folks at Basecamp, but basically it allows you to do sort of email, but in a really relaxed fashion. They've introduced some new concepts to workflows. So for example, something called an inbox, which is an important inbox, so that it filters all of your other stuff to other ones. And once you learn the keyboard shortcuts and things like that, it's quite a cool application for being able to organize that. Now I'm gonna give this one an amazing, because I think for the $99 per year fee that you pay, you get your own custom domain, which could be say Francesco at Hey.com, which is impressive. And it's really well put together as an application. You know that the folks said like, Basecamp, they're really intuitive with both their design, but also they think about how the human aspect of email works. So I'm definitely giving that one an amazing, to really impress me as an application. So um, I'm gonna put uh, Missive, which is an email application I'm currently transitioning out of. I'm really impressed with it. I think it goes as great. It's a great one for teams as well, if you wanna connect team members, but as a personal one, it's actually impressed me over the years of using it. Three years I've been using it. I really like it. It's, it's just been really great, uh, grand to use, to be honest. I particularly like if your team members, you can assign stuff to people, you can start conversations, comment privately without actually interacting with the person at the other end. And it's really good as well for the amount of customizations you can do as a individual user. It does come a little bit of a higher price at $12 per month, but at the same time, if you're someone who's a freelancer or entrepreneur or someone that runs their own business, just any of that spectrum, it's quite a nice reliable email application. But if you want to add people in the future to it, it's a decent bet. So next up is Newton Mail. Now Newton Mail has been bought once, uh, they've shut down twice. <laughs> it's been quite a big journey. I used to work for Newton Mail as a marketing consultant. So I, I'm i sort of part, uh, it was about three or four years ago now. So I have uh, some really interesting opinions on them over the time that they've grown. But I think now they're actually a really, really well-priced email application. When they first launched, they weren't, like people were complaining at the $49.99 per year. They were like, oh my God, that's so expensive. But now when you look at the market and you 
you look at things like Hey, Superhuman, Polymail, they're actually a really well priced application because they come on all devices, they've got some advanced features that some of them don't have, and it's really well designed. So you're getting a good package, I think, for $49.99, if that's still the price. I'm almost certain it st still is per year. So I'm gonna put it in the amazing category. I'm impressed with it. I think it does a good job. And that's not because I work there. I would have said probably a year ago, I would have given it less. But now that these apps like Hey and Superhuman have really taken precedent, I think that it's a good value for money wise. It's a good bet. So Outlook is up next and that instantly gets a great because they've put together a really well designed application from Microsoft. They bought Sunrise, a calendar app back in 2016 or 15, I believe. Can't remember just exactly on the dates, but it is so well put together, the calendar side of it. You can plug in things like Gmail and it just works great. Like the whole experience, if you're looking for a free one, works almost as good as the Edison Mail or Air Mail, but you're not paying anything. The only thing that you may be concerned at is that you're in a Microsoft ecosystem or that you know, you may not be able to get certain features. Uh, I don't believe they have some features like uh, may have had send later and things like that, but more the advanced features or systems or workflows that say superhuman hay and thing other people like that have. And if I guess you don't want to support an independent or, or you, you want to support an independent then other ones like Newton Hay, Superhuman, Tempo are better bets because they're run not by big companies so, and you want to, you're willing to pay. So that's the, the reason why you go against an application like that. But if you're someone that's already tied into the Microsoft ecosystem, it's probably one of the best apps out there for email. So next up is Polymail. And this one always impressed me. The design is really good. Some of the team functionality is really nice as well. They always keep it fresh, updated. And to be honest, it's sort of like one of those apps that is just a bit like Newton. It's sort of on Newton's par. And I, I believe Newton just does a better job job at putting together the whole cross-platform abilities and also some of the features and explanations of it. I just think when I was doing my research on this, I found that that was the case. So still gets a great, that's a great uh, sort of review on those. Next up is um, ProtonMail, which is a free security focused email application. I think security is really key. Some of these applications you'll need to check out their privacy and security policies around encrypted emails because some of them don't include it, but ProtonMail is well known for being the security focused application with their servers, I believe based in Switzerland. Um, they've got like really good bank grade security. If you go to the Pro, you can go even further. But with ProtonMail, you also, I believe get with the Pro, you get protonmail.com email custom domain, which is nice, especially when you're sending out emails and you don't want it from say Gmail, you don't want to plug in your own Gmail experience, stuff like that. So the application, really good if you're security concerned. Next up is SparkMail, and I'm gonna put it straight in amazing. I think Read will make great applications. In my opinion, I think that for a free application, it's got some really lovely uh, smart inbox suggestive features. So it really tones down your inbox as much as it can without really educating you too much about it. I believe it recently when they did their last update for iOS and, and the Mac version, they actually had Stephen Fry as their uh, official sort of speaker or uh, person who was doing the video, which is amazing. Like the fact that they can get Stephen Fry is cool. <laughs> so they get amazing, not for Stephen Fry, but just for that. <laughs> Next up is Spike. This is an app that, to be honest, when I first saw it, I was like, no, because what they were trying to do was this like team conversation thing in the email. And I was like, oh, that looks really messy. It looks like you're just trying to mimic Slack because you're just messaging people. And I always feel that emails is like professional experience or at least this formalized experience which you go into and you send emails. It, it's not a conversational application like WhatsApp or Messenger. But to be fair, when I got showed around this application and I actually tried it myself, I was actually impressed with it. We've got a video on our channel which dives into it, but the reason I was impressed with it because it's a layer. So for example, when you send that email, it actually still appears professional. It doesn't appear unprofessional. And if you were to say, and team members, you can connect them to uh, Spike and that helps you to have a sort of conversational like experience in real time with them. So you're sort of like uh, having email and Slack in one as long as your team are convinced and, and ready to use Spike, which is quite cool. So this has actually impressed me. I'm gonna put it in the amazing category. I think just because I was originally really unsold on it, but I actually fairly impressed with the way that it works. Next up is Superhuman. Now, again, I'm gonna put this one in, uh, not sure. 
It's between amazing and great. I think the $30 per month is high for a lot of people, but I think there's this, I think there's this place for premium applications in the market 100%. We're seeing that more recently with apps like Clay, which is like this personal CRM tool. Really impressed with the way Superhuman build this application. So I'm gonna put it in amazing. I think it's whether you're willing to pay for apps like this or not. More recently, I've moved from Missive to Tempo, which I'm gonna talk about next. I'm impressed with it, but that's $99 per year. Same sort of price as Hey. So I think people, if you're willing to pay for an email experience you go into every single day, I think that's fine. Um, I think price is your own sort of experience. But again, it's it's really up to you. I think, I think the way they put together your application is really smart. So I'm gonna give it amazing. Next up is Tempo 2. This is the app I've moved from Missive to. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed, but I'm gonna put it in great. I'll explain why. I'll talk first about what it does. The reason I like it is because basically instead of like this long list of emails, you have priority and other. Every time during the day, for example, like I've said it at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., I do a force back, a, a batch comes in of emails, you sort them. And then when you sort them, they go into a to-do or reminders area. When you go in the to-do section, you hit focus mode and you clear those emails. So I really like the workflow abilities behind it. I think it's fantastic. I think actually for me, at least when I tried Hey at the start, I was actually more impressed with it than I was Hey because it made more sense to me um, than the way that they did it. I don't take credit away from Hey. I think the way they've done it is great, but this for me at least did better. So I was really impressed with the workflow side of it. The reason I'm not giving it amazing because UI is fantastic. The design, just the way that the animations work in the application is great, especially for Mac but they don't have an iOS application at the moment. So I'm still, that's the reason I'm transitioning over from Missive because Missive still has the iOS application. So I'm still transferring over. So as you can imagine, taking a bit of time to sort of move over. Finally, we have Yahoo Mail. And the reason I put this up here, I'm going to give it an average. <laughs> no, I, it's a good application. It's got some nice abilities in it. Like I think you can do things like unsubscribe. It's got a nice UI, better UI than it used to. But I'm going to put it in average just because it's such an average experience. And I didn't have anything below good. Uh, I feel like I should have been harsher to these applications. But those are my go-to selections for email applications. Hopefully this was helpful if you're looking at an email application in the market. Remember the price, remember the privacy side of it. Always make sure you check those two first before jumping in. But again, email's a layer, so it's just your preference really at the end of the day at to which you're willing to pay in terms of price and um, your data. So folks, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed um, reviewing them. We'll be back with more very soon. So do make sure you subscribe to this Keep Productive YouTube channel and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.